frankly, I wouldn't believe it either. But this is a great wool ute for 41,000 bucks. There's a number of things. First of all, if I took the grill off this, you wouldn't actually know what brand this was. It looks pretty much like any other LCV or light commercial vehicle on the market. The difference is this is about half of the price of the opposition, which is utterly stunning. It's got a T-litre 120 kilowatt engine, a little bit underpowered, but it's got a ZF eight-speed automatic gearbox. Eight-speed automatic. The only one that's better is probably Ford's Ranger with a 10-speed gearbox, but this does a really beautiful job. All the exterior lighting is LED, the headlights, tail lights, the lot, there's side steps, and now remember this is the mid-range model. Nice chrome effect on the mirrors though, that's plastic, so you know, eventually it's going to peel off. Indicator repeaters and smart locking. Push the button and then put your hand inside the door to unlock it. Believe me, you need these side steps to get in. I think in this black, it looks pretty good. Then we get onto the back. There's a step to step up so you can throw your stuff in. There's lights down here for the number plate. This actually looks all pretty good. There's also a rear view camera. Something that once upon a time you had to strain to see. Oh, wow, that's unexpected. This is the first time I've had this open. This has got a strut here to let this down lightly. Now you do not get that on an $85,000 Toyota Hilux. The tub has an inner liner and there's a couple of tie down points. Wow. Just, wow. It wasn't that easy to get in because this is a long way up, but unusually for these utes, there's an awful lot of room in the back. Also on the back are some vents, a household outlet for electricity for your drills and computers, and a USB as well. And some rather nice quilted vinyl fabric. The space in the back is something that I don't see often in the opposition cars that cost twice as much. Starting it brings both the screens to life eventually. I know that radio is going to come on, so it's taking rather a long time to start up. Very, very long time to start up. That's going to blast me, so let's... Wow, that's some. Um, okay. Now, I've got my. To keep people out of prison. People. Now, I turned that down on purpose, but anyway, there you go. This is one of the easiest infotainment systems that I've ever had to work. It is very impressive. The graphics are nice and clear, but also everything that it does is also nice and clear. Buttons along the bottom for radio, phone, Android Auto, uh, and so forth. I've got Apple CarPlay, it is by wire, and I've got my phone plugged in. There is a voice assistant too, which for a change actually works. Listen to this. Air conditioning, 19 degrees. Okay. I've adjusted the temperature in all areas to 19.0 degrees. And you can ask it to do other things as well. You can ask it to turn the outside air off and various other things. It's all plastic, but it is lovely. But there is some of this metalized plastic, which I'm not terribly fussed on. And the reason for that is I personally think it looks cheap and eventually it gets scratched and starts to peel and so forth. Just have it black or some other color. These HVAC controls, extremely easy and front and center is the hazard flasher down below that a couple of quick access buttons for four-wheel drive and so forth downhill descent traction control off and this brings up quickly the ADAS settings so you can turn on and off the blind spot monitoring and steering assist some people don't like those things I can understand why some of them are very intrusive and for a car that's, remember, $41,000 drive away, this has electric seats. Three ton towing capacity. Below those settings are some outlets for USB, including one that connects to the infotainment system and one for 12 volt that I've connected my Navman to. There is, if you like, a USB up here that you can connect that to. I just didn't bring the USB cord. 
the power delivery in normal mode is, let's just say it's punchy, considering it's only got 120 kilowatts. I've put it in sport mode. This car makes some of the most annoying noises possible. Now I'm whipping along here at the speed limit. These leaf springed utes are notorious for being firm, especially when it comes to being driven unloaded fast. The back end is really, really light. That eight speed ZF box is lovely and responsive, beautifully smooth. I didn't expect to find this to be as fun as it is, but um, it is. Now I'm on the highway. This is not a particularly good stretch of road. It is quite cementy, it is quite dreadful, and it's pretty much what you'd expect of poorly kept New South Wales roads. And yet, the ride in this is surprisingly good. The Canon is doing exceptionally well. This appears to have electric steering, something that almost all of the opposition does not have. And so the lane keep assist and collision avoidance and all of that sort of stuff is actually active steering. Now, the reason that's so important is I've done this in Hilux and a couple of other brands and it breaks the front wheel on whichever side is not crossing to drag you back in. It's, it's dangerous at speed. It's absolutely horrendous. This got five stars and it's got a seven year warranty and it's half the price of the opposition. I mean, that is to people with ABN. It's got automatic everything, automatic wipers, automatic lights. When you turn the engine off, it puts itself into park and applies the parking brake. There are some utes that still have a manual brake. It's just started to rain again. Sydney weather's been on shuffle. So, there are a couple of other important things that I want to point out. One, the ute market in Australia is consistently the top selling segment in the country. I don't know who's buying them, but they can't all be tradesmen. But they probably are mostly business people. Let's set this again. Lovely. That being the case, the top one is usually Hilux or Ranger, and they swap periodically. And depending on whether there's a boatload of Teslas come in, sometimes they're third. But they're very few and far between. So with that being the top segment, and with those cars costing twice as much as this, this starts at 33000 33000 for the two-wheel drive model, admittedly. This has four low. For a 40 $41,000 car. I'm going to be honest, these utes are not my raison d'etre, but I am so impressed with this because it drives like the others, has nicer steering, and it's cheap. And that's all this week from the Great Wall Canon L, mid range. $41,000 ute from Great Wall. <laughs> it's, it's kick the opposition's ass. As always, hit like, leave a comment, and just over there to subscribe.